You're listening to Superpower Mamas on the Superpower Up podcast, the show that embraces the art of soulful parenting. Hello and welcome. I'm Laura Greco and you're listening to Superpower Mamas. And today our topic is the truth about meltdowns and what self-development methods really work. And we're speaking today with Sandy Hall. And I'm so excited to have her. I've known her for some time now um, as, a, as a, we network in parenting type um, networks that we've been involved in. Um, she is a parenting coach and the CEO of um, Imperfectly Imperfect Parenting Solutions and the creator of a mom method, which is to minimize our meltdowns. She developed hundreds of parents. Um, she has helped hundreds of parents to discover the real solutions, the reasons why there's meltdowns, how to resolve them, and I'm going to let her talk about that. But in the meantime, thank you so much for being here, Sandy Hall. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me here, Laura. I'm so excited. I am excited you are here. So we're going to start off our show with the traditional question. Um, which Perfect. is, what is your mama superpower? I love that question because I really believe that we all have superpowers and really lots of them, mm -hmm. but there are certain ones that um, really, when you own your gift, mm -hmm. it makes such a huge difference, um, not only in your family, but in your entire life. Right. Um, so I would have to say that my superpower is the ability to see beneath the surface of what is going on. Um, I kind of think of it like a duck on the water. When you see a duck on a pond, it's just gliding along nice and smoothly. But if you were to look under the water and see those little feet like paddling like crazy, you would have no idea if you just looked at the surface how hard that duck is working. But by looking under the surface, you get such a bigger picture of what's really going on. And that is my superpower, is to be able to see below the surface and figure out what is going on to actually cause these behaviors that are causing conflicts within the home. That's beautifully said. Love thank that. You. Yeah, thank you. And what a great superpower. I'm sure it's helped you in your personal life because you also have children, right? Yes, I do. I do. I have a 13-year-old um, daughter and a 16-year-old son. And so, yes, it has helped me quite a bit. Yes, yes. Oh, that's great. So how, um, well, gee whiz, it's almost obvious how that would help, right? Um, help you because you're able to show insight when you're seeing behavior. So you want to expand on that a little bit, perhaps in advance? Sure. sure. Um, <coughs> by looking deeper at what is going on, it can help you to not be as triggered um, and at, not to respond quite so emotionally mm -hmm. to a, um emotional situation. Because when your child is having a meltdown, um, it can be really easy to react rather than respond. Yeah. Um, for instance, one of the moms that I worked with, her daughter was coming home from school um, in just a horrible mood and would have these meltdowns within five to 10 minutes of getting in the car sometimes. And um, in looking at all of the things going on, one of the strategies that we started to use was that she actually made a protein smoothie for her daughter before picking her up. And as soon as she came in the car, gave her that smoothie and got her eating something right away. And that made a huge impact for the rest of the afternoon because we looked at what was going on. She had, hadn't eaten anything for several hours. She mm -hmm. was hangry. Yeah. And she needed that almost immediately. Wow. So that's one of those type of situations where looking at the whole picture and looking underneath the behavior to what's causing it can make such a huge impact. That's beautiful. And that, that's so helpful, too, that you were able to um, offset 
a potentially, you know, um, you know, the, these kinds of things gain momentum when people are, are upset, you know, and it just continues and continues. And, and yet such a simple, take a step back, look at the situation and create a new solution. It works and everything's great, right? Yeah. Cool. I am all about trying to find simple solutions that have big impact. <laughs> Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. How did you get into this work, Sandy? Uh, well, interestingly enough, um, I think that it started back when um, when my son was in second grade, and he started having some school problems, um, and it ended up he got diagnosed with ADHD. Mm -hmm. And I had to learn a lot of strategies to help him through that um, because he wasn't at the level that we uh, needed to medicate him or anything. It was um, more manageable with structure strategies and diet mm -hmm. is how we, we did it. Um, but it took a lot to learn what would work for him. Um, and then came my daughter who didn't respond to any of that <laughs> that I had learned. That had <laughs> everybody's um, different. <laughs> yeah. And I learned, um, you know, as many people with more than one child know that what works for one child doesn't work for another, mm -hmm. or it has to be presented differently. Um, and so while I've always had a love of communication and relationship building, having that experience of learning to respond um, to two different personalities, two different set of needs mm -hmm. to get what needed to be done, done, um, I learned so much. And then I found myself helping my friends and helping other parents. Mm -hmm. And so it naturally developed into um, – a desire to want to share this with more people because I found so many amazing strategies that work and um, different ways to communicate it and implement it for your child's type of personality. Love it. Love it. So out, out of your need was born something that you were able to sh also share with others. Oh, yes. Really good. Yes. You know, um, often in a couple minutes, we're going to go for a break, but often um, I just want to bring this up since you did. Um, when moms are experiencing um, challenging situations, they can feel like they're doing something wrong. Mm -hmm. not, you know, not enough in some way with their children. Did you ever experience that? Absolutely. Um, I think when we feel powerless, mm -hmm. it is really, really hard because we love our children and we want to fix things for them and make life easier for them. And when, our kids are struggling. Um, it can be very easy to fill uh, to fall into the trap of what did I do to create this? Right. Um, in fact, I find it really interesting. One of the things I've I've seen is how easy it is for us as parents to accept the blame, even if it's unfounded, mm -hmm. but to ex uh, to accept that blame when our kids do something wrong or when they're struggling. But when they have a success, mm -hmm. most parents do not say, that's because of my good parenting, or mm -hmm. I made that happen. Mm -hmm. No, it's completely different. It's like when they do something good, it's all about them, and they did this, and wow, you're so amazing. Mm -hmm. But yet, when they struggle, oh, it's my fault. I did something wrong. Mm -hmm. I need to fix it. And so that's something really interesting that I have seen in my work with parents and through my own self-development, how easy it is to fall into that trap. Yeah. And I think every single one of us as mothers has, has had that experience at some point or more. And um, mm -hmm. so it's, it's great to uh, know that there's tools out there that can help us. We have to go for a break, Sandy. So I'm going to um, let everybody know, can you um, share your website where everyone can reach you and find you? Absolutely. Um, you can find me at sandyhallcoaching.com. That's S-A-N-D-Y-H-A-L-L coaching.com. Beautiful. 
You're listening to Superpower Mamas, everyone, and we're going to take a quick break. We've been talking with Sandy Hall about the truth about meltdowns and what self-development self-development methods work. We, you know, how they work. So we'll be right back. Are you here to change the world? Do you talk about things like vibration, frequency, awakening, and consciousness? Are you pretty sure you have superpowers? The Superpower Net is unlike normal coaching programs and conscious communities. We provide training, intuitive guidance, peer-to-peer learning, intensive one-on-one coaching, and a high vibrational network of people just like you. When you join the Net, you get 24-7 access to a collaborative group of people who support you as you master your personal power and unlock your superpowers. If you are ready to use your superpowers to change the world, then join the Superpower Net today. Visit superpowerexperts.com slash the net to learn more. Welcome back, everyone. You're listening to Superpower Mamas, and we're speaking with Sandy Hall on the topic of the truth about meltdowns and what self-development methods, re- what methods really work. So, Sandy, before we went on the break, we were talking not only about the, you know, the underlying reasons for uh, meltdowns, both our children's, but also ours. Yes. And that, and this is the place I want to get to, because on this show, you know, we're speaking to mamas and helping them to recall their own superpowers and to strengthen those so that they can, too, go out and be powerful influencers, whether it's in their families or everywhere they go. So um, in my work with clients, I am finding that, um, you know, I believe that women are the foundation of a family Mm -hmm. and also that they are um, also the ones taking the brunt of a lot of things, Mm -hmm. the family guilt, which is what we were just talking about, right? Yeah. Right. Um, Okay. So so how do you help? Because I know that you help uh, moms to um, work on this. Uh, mm-hmm. meltdown situation from their own standpoint, not in judgment, but in, mm-hmm. in, um, in, re- in solution. I love that you said that because being not in judgment is a huge component of that. Um, you need to know at, as a parent when you're actually contributing to meltdowns in your family as well. Mm -hmm. And having that self-awareness is really key to being able to build the skills then to react differently and to be able to create the space. Um, Sometimes I'll call it the brain space that you need Mm -hmm. to have to um, process things and give yourself that little room to breathe so that you can respond rather than react. And, um, I believe that there is a moment, a precious moment in any situation where we can either respond or react. And learning how to identify that moment Mm -hmm. so you can make the most of it, that's where magic happens. Mm. Because when you can be in that moment, that's where your superpower is its strongest and its clearest and you can push the activate button and use it. That's wonderful. And that pause and that breath, isn't it true? At least I, I, when I've researched science, I I think you know this too, is, um, you know, that taking that pause and that breath really gets us out of the reactive brain Mm -hmm. and allows us to tune back into our intuitive heart. Yes. Which yes. knows so is so much wiser. Yes, I um I actually have a lot of training in complementary alternative medicine, mm. and so I learned about how the body responds to stress, mm. and it was amazing to learn all this stuff because then I learned how to kind of hack the nervous system. So you can turn off those stress responses and get back to where you want to be and oh. where you want to parent from because that is so important. It is so easy to get caught up in the cycle of um, how you respond to your kids or how you mm-hmm. react to your kids, I should say. Um, because when there's a dance that you two are used to 
being in, you Mm -hmm. both know the steps. But if one of you tries to change the dance, somebody's feet get stuck on to begin with. And so it takes a while to change the pattern of the dance that you're in to be a new dance that's more harmonious, that's more in alignment of what you want to create for your family. That's a great analogy. I love that, Sandy. Thank you. That's very, very nice. And when we think about that, um, the dance of life, right? Mm -hmm. Um, And a mom is in a situation and it seems like there's a lot of meltdowns going on and she's maybe trying to discover what is the the real bottom line. I also wonder um, from a mother's perspective, if often she's so deep dive into the parenting and the shoulds Mm -hmm. that she's forgetting who she is. So we're, right. So we're speaking to her autonomy. How important is it for her also to be um, recognizing that she is not them? Right. Right. One of my favorite sayings is um, to stop shooting all over yourself. (laughs) Shooting. Yeah. Um, Because that is so (laughs) important as a mom. Um, There are always things that we should do. Mm -hmm. And those make it hard to be yourself and to own who you are, your uniqueness, your greatness. One of my core foundational beliefs is that you are exactly the parent that your child needs. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Now you may need to learn some skills You may need to learn some strategies Mm -hmm. and that doesn't mean it's going to be easy or that you're going to enjoy it, Mm -hmm. but you and only you are exactly the parent that your child needs. Absolutely. Absolutely. You were entrusted with that life. Yeah. And, and, you know, as far as I go, you know, I believe there's so much that we learn from our children. Our children are like mirrors mm-hmm. for us. So, mm-hmm. you know, in our journey of of growing and learning and, you know, becoming that powerful person that each of us is, there's an opportunity to learn even from the little ones. Absolutely. Oh my gosh. Having kids teaches you so much about yourself. Mm-hmm. Shows you areas that you need to grow in. Mm-hmm. And heck, there's been things that I have done, even even like self-care things that mm-hmm. I have done starting from a place because I want to give my kids the example to follow. Yeah. Can't, I mean, you can't give from an empty bucket. You right. Be doing it. <laughs> right. I mean, but I, I have literally used my kids as the reason to take care of myself because I don't want them to struggle with that the way that I had to struggle to learn to take care of myself. I want them to have that example to follow because I believe it's important for them to be successful in life. Absolutely. Absolutely. And I like uh, also earlier in the show, you were pointing out about the, the difference between your son and your daughter and, and, you know, what worked for one didn't necessarily work for another. And, Mm -hmm. you know, energetically, we're all here for a purpose Mm -hmm. and we all um, basically speak or, or fuel that purpose in different ways. So it's, it's important, isn't it, for us to not only understand those differences, but also be able to live our different way in and understand our way style of parenting and how we can also see that child as an individual and support that as well. Yes. I think that's really important um, to keep your individuality as a parent and to um, not just keep it, but actually celebrate it. And yeah. to see your kids celebrate, see, have your kids see you celebrating who you are. Um, kids so often just want to fit in. Yeah. They don't want to be different. And they need that example of seeing you be good with who you are. Right. To own who you are. And 
Um, I mean, I tell my kids all the time, I'm not perfect. You didn't come with a manual. I'm doing the best that I, that I can. Right. And, you know, but I own when I struggle and I own when I succeed. Mm-hmm. And I think that that is super important for our kids to see. And I think it's super important for us just to do as moms, as women, to own our greatness. Yeah. Yeah. Because really, we're pretty amazing. Yes, we are. And as we are, you know, um, often I see um, women um, trying to fit in some, to some kind of mold that they think is, is going mm-hmm. to be, make them better or look, appear better or mm-hmm. give them um, the love or whatever it is that they feel they need at the time where they're looking outside for the acceptance. They're yep. looking to, to have that praise or whatever um, is, you know, so that they can hold their head up in the community. Mm-hmm. And yet, that's superficial, actually. Right. Um, being the woman you are as a woman first in your own intuitive heart, right? That's what yeah. we're talking about here. Being able to tune in, really love who you are. Mm-hmm. And it's amazing when we believe it. <laughs> Everybody else does too. <laughs> it does. Isn't that, isn't that true? <laughs> when you own your own power and you love yourself unconditionally... Yeah. You know, it, it just spreads out and people respond to you different. People show up differently in your life yeah. and it all stems from you. Yeah. You know, you said something earlier about um, it being a mirror, a reflection of what's inside us. Yeah. And not only is that with our families, but that's how we go out in life, how we view life, really the internal thoughts, that, mm-hmm. that inner part, how we really feel about it that's what shows up in our life. Yeah. And that's a key part of working with moms is learning to not just love yourself, but like radically accept yourself. Yes. Yeah. Because it can be like, oh yeah, I love myself. But to accept yourself exactly as you are in that perfectly imperfect place I mean because you know what life's not going to be perfect things are not going to go the way that we think they should or want them to our kids are sometimes going to be jerks and that's okay because internally we're good we're solid and we know that we've got this and this is not always an easy thing to look at, but, but by looking at our life and what we're receiving in life, okay. if we're not liking it, the most um, courageous thing to do is to really look at it without judgment right. and, and see, right? See right. what's going on and then be willing to seek out the tools um, to dig, dig into our own heart and be silent and listen. Yeah. Right. That's so important. And I think it's really one of those things that um, it's, it's simple, but it's not easy. Nope. It's a practice. Yeah. <laughs> that's, what I that's why we yeah. call it a practice, right? Because that's exactly. what it is. And yes. we're going to, and we're going to um, do it again and again and again. And then eventually it's going to become natural to us. Yep. And I think this is key here too, Sandy, is that, I, I'm a little older than you and, you know, generationally things have been adjusting as mm-hmm. we go, but back in the day, you know, and the culture itself has been more about, you know, the shame type style of parenting and the, the punishment and all the focus on the, on what's not right. Mm-hmm. And, not, and no blame or judgment here. This has just been how it's been. And we we're evolving out of that. Right. And recognizing that the focus on what is, is um, thriving is the part we want to put our attention on. Right. If we want to thrive. Right. So in your work, you know, the work that we're all doing as, as we work together um, mm-hmm. in this mommy movement, which I believe that's what we are in. Um, Absolutely. Right. Um, how do you see the work you're doing? What's your big vision? Like, what do you see? 
you know, you're doing your work in your office and with your moms, but um, what's the big picture? The big picture, honestly, for me is um, I have a passion to help people who are experiencing anxiety mm -hmm. and both as a mom and as kids. I think that it really is an epidemic right now and it's scary mm -hmm. um, how many kids are anxious. And to me, that's another form of a meltdown. It's just mm -hmm. an internal one. Yeah, I agree. And my vision is to be able to help families build the communication skills, build the relationships so that they feel accepted, that they learn to communicate their needs. They, they learn to even realize what their needs are. Because mm -hmm. how many of us have been gotten to the point where we're overwhelmed yeah. and we're like, how the heck did that happen? I thought everything was fine. Now, all of a sudden I'm completely overwhelmed. Exactly. It's like it, it just shows up. It's a skill to learn your signs for when you're getting overwhelmed. So it's not just all of a sudden there's a big pile at your doorstep, you know? Right. And so that's some of the skills that I want to help families build those awarenesses, those conversation skills, um, the connection so that we can build that resilience mm -hmm. in our kids. We can experience it ourselves as women yeah. because taking that energy and those skill sets out into the world, mm -hmm. that's going to be, in my opinion, that's what's going to change the world. Yeah. When you can show up in the world, okay with who you are and being so okay with who you are that you're okay with other people being different and who they are and who they are. That's that, a good point. Yeah. I mean, that's what we need. Mm -hmm. We need people to be okay with others but the only way you're going to be okay with somebody else is if you're okay with yourself. Absolutely. That's actually the reason we get frustrated with others. Right? <laughs> right? Because we're not so, really feeling good about ourselves. Absolutely. So that all comes back to that meltdown. And so when I say the mom method of minimizing our meltdowns, mm -hmm. it's both those internal mm -hmm. and the external external ways that we're seeing them show up in the world in our families that's great that's great that you're doing this work sounds Thank you. fascinating and Thank um, you. very useful to our moms today yeah so sandy out of all that we've discussed do you have like a tool or something you'd like to leave our moms with today that they can Go ahead and apply even right away. Um, Something they can do now. You know, I think taking a deep breath, mm. actually. Mm. I'm going to teach you real quick because um, what's, what's coming to mind, it's a breath called the 488 breath. And this is one of those little uh, hacks that I was talking about earlier for your yeah. nervous system okay. that helps move from the place of stress and anxiety and overwhelm um, can also be referred to as the fight or flight response. Yep. Move from that to a place of calm and solution finding, mm -hmm. um, which is actually a whole different branch of the nervous system, but we're not going to talk about that right now. I'm just going to get right into Sherry this, this quick little exercise. Okay. Sure. So what you're going to do is you're just going to very nice and easy. Take a breath in to the count of four. Hold it for a count of eight. And then gently exhale for a count of eight. And then again, you're just going to breathe in for the count of four and hold it for a count of eight. And gently exhale to the count of eight. 
And you're going to want to do this. You can do it at minimum two to three times, but really you can do it, you know, up to a couple minutes mm -hmm. and just give yourself a chance to fully breathe, bring oxygen into your body, mm -hmm. let your nervous system respond. That's beautiful. I'm so Thank glad you Jenny. like it. Yeah. And if I, if I could just tag a little thing here that, um, this breath that you're talking about, mm -hmm. why not attach it to a habit you already have? Like every time you get a drink of water or every time you go to the bathroom, mm -hmm. I don't know, some other yeah. habit so that you're doing it more than just when you're in meltdown. <laughs> that would be great. You know, it's funny you say about the bathroom. I knew, know somebody who was all about making, um, tiny habits. And every time he went to the bathroom, he would do a set of squats. Oh. And then <laughs> that was his exercise. So every time he went to the bathroom throughout the day, <laughs> he was getting exercise. Oh, so I love cute. your idea of yeah. putting it somewhere in your life that it's a regular practice. This is also great to use, um, like if picking up your kids and you yeah. have a minute before they get in the car, mm -hmm. do this. And it's great to teach your kid. I have, um, I have a couple of ones that I use for younger kids that are a little bit more interactive and, and fun. Mm -hmm. But this 488 breath is great for older elementary kids all the way up through teens. This is actually one that um, my son consistently uses. He tends to be a nervous test taker. Yeah. And so this helps him very much calm himself down and get centered before taking a test. Right. So it's not about being perfect. It is all about knowing the tools and utilizing them. Exactly. Love it, Cindy. Exactly. Thank you so much. So please remind everyone where they can find you. Well, I'd love to have you come to my website. It is www.sandyhallcoaching.com. Very nice. Thank you so much for being a guest on the show. And I want to thank all our listeners also for being here. I'm so excited that you have joined us and I hope that you go away with tools that you can make use of right away, like breathing, right? Yeah. So mamas, love yourselves for the treasures that you are. You have already had what it takes. So every big change starts with a small one, right? Mm -hmm. And stitch by stitch we get there. So go out and and be you and uh, sharpen your superpowers and go out and change the world. <laughs> awesome. I'm so happy you came. Thank you so much, all of you. And Thank you, Laura. Thank you. Are you ready to discover your superpowers? Go now to superpowerexperts.com and take the superpower quiz today.